Hi, and welcome to Bytes and Bits. A lot of people ask, what is the best language to learn programming with? Um, and if you ask programmers, you'll get a different answer really from every single one. A lot of people are very tied up in the language that they use the most and that they're most favorite with. Um, so they each will extol all the virtues of their language and pinpoint um, discrepancies with other languages and so on. And, and for beginners looking for one to start with, um, really this becomes a very confusing uh, process where, where everybody's giving you different answers with very valid reasons for each of their choices. Uh, my opinion on this matter is, is actually quite simple. The very best language for you to start with is the one that you can use right now. You've got the um, interpreter or the compiler for the language. You've got the development tool, so an IDE for it. You've got some really good tutorials that you're looking forward to doing that were going to keep your interest. And, and you've got the machine to do it with, so you don't have to go out and buy some extra hardware or upgrade your computer or whatever. So you can get started right now, because that is the very best way to learn to program, is to program. A lot of the time, the reasons that people give you for choosing a particular language are very much based on what they use the languages for. Um, and they'll, a lot of it is based on sort of the higher level, um, more intricate parts of your language, um, which as a beginner, all, all of that really doesn't matter at all. There, there are some very basic core principles that when you're first starting out, you have to get the hang of. And, and these core principles are really identical um, whatever language you're going to use. So whether you want to pick up on Python or, or C++ or C Sharp or Java or, or JavaScript or, or whatever language it is, these core principles are going to be exactly the same. So once you've learned them in one language, well, really, you can apply those across any language you want to. So the core principles I'm really talking about are the ideas of how your software is going to store information while it's running. So we're looking at the ideas of variables and arrays and, and, and structures such as that. Your program needs to be able to make decisions. So we need to be able to compare values and make some conditional statements such as if and switch and so on like that. We'll need some sort of what we call iteration, where your program is able to loop around doing a set of instructions a, a number of times. Uh, and in that, we're looking at sort of for loops and, and while do loops and repeat until loops uh, and so on. You'll need to be able to break your software up into smaller chunks using functions and then you use those functions over and over again within your code. Uh, and one of the things which I do um, rate as a beginner level um, skill is object-oriented coding, which, which a lot of people leave off till a bit later. But um, to be honest, if, if you get the hang of it when you're beginning to learn, um, it does make the whole process just so, so much easier. So your language being able to use um, classes uh, and then define objects and so on. And I say, most modern languages allow you to do all of these tasks the way in which they implement them are, are almost identical across all the different languages, especially at, at this basic core level. Pretty much everything is done the same. There are there will be syntax differences. So in other words, the the sort of the words and the punctuation and the way in which your particular language lays out blocks of code. But other than that, the the ideas and the and even down to the actual sort of wording and, and the commands and statements that you use will be very, very similar. And, and what I would always say to people is, when you start to learn to program, the language you start off with is, is not necessarily going to be the language you end up using most in, in your programming career or, or in your hobby. Um, you will need to be able to swap between languages. And that's why learning the core principles of programming is, is important rather than the intricacies of one particular language. If, if you have the core principles, you, you can really take that knowledge across to whatever language you want, and you will be doing that. So even in, in my career, most of my professional work is done using PHP and JavaScript and HTML, um, very much based on and SQL, um, very much based then on sort of my web development career. 
in my project work, I work in Python when I'm working with my Raspberry Pi, I'm doing some game programming. And if I want to connect up to my Arduinos, I'm using C++. So, so all of these mix of languages, I need to be able to swap between them. Uh, and again, because I know and understand the, the basic principles of programming and, and how that interacts, then it's just it's really just learning some, some different words and some different punctuation to jump between these different languages. So again, if, if you haven't programmed before, um, you, you might not be sure what exactly I'm talking about, but let's let's look at an example of, of say we have a, a piece of software uh, and we have two values, perhaps it's measuring, perhaps it's measuring the um, liquid level in a tank. Uh, and we know that the fill level is a certain value. So as the tank fills up, we are measuring the actual level of the liquid. And when it reaches a certain point, you want to turn the tap off. So really we want to compare two values. So we're comparing the actual level of the water compared to the fill level, the maximum level. And if the actual level then gets larger than the maximum fill level, at that point we want to turn, this, turn the tap off. So we're looking at what's known as a conditional statement. And the one which most, uh, well pretty much every language uses, is the if statement. So let's have a look at that in, in a number of different languages. And you'll see that they are pretty much identical, just with some punctuation differences. So here we are with Python, C Sharp and PHP. So you can see each of them uses this idea of the if statement. And I'll say that is common to almost all um, programming languages. Our if statement then uses an expression which we are testing for um, whether our value A is greater than our value B. So again, they're both using variables. They're using this um, greater than operator to create an expression, and that expression evaluates to true or false. Okay, some languages require the expression to be inside brackets, some don't. Then we have this conditional block. So, so this line of code, the one that prints something out, and you can see each of those is almost identical as well. Okay, and again, um, on PHP for, for, for console output uses something called the echo um, function. But that conditional block then is held inside a, a code block. So Python, we have a colon, and then we indent our line of code in by one block and that then creates this as a block which is the conditional block of code for this if statement. In C sharp and both PHP we use our curly braces and the curly braces then denote a block of code so that means that this line of code is now the conditional block for this if statement and then same down here. But the, the idea here is that we have our if expression conditional block. They all work in exactly the same way. And as you can see, moving between languages, you just simply need to learn the different sort of syntax, the instructions and the formatting of the instructions and, and the concepts behind them are all identical. So as I say, for me and my advice would be that your, your choice of language boils down to the one which you can access now. Um, the most important part of learning to code is to actually make a start and to keep going. It, it, it can be a little bit tricky in part. Some of the concepts you have to come across are, are a little bit tricky and you'll have to get your head around that. But if, if you keep going and you get through that blockage, then you will find that um, once you've got these basics down, moving on from there into the more advanced stuff, in, into games programming and even sort of artificial intelligence, all of those, and I mean absolutely all of those different topics and advanced techniques, they are based on all of these basic fundamentals of, of data storage, comparisons, iteration, functions, objects, and so on. It's just more of the same, just wrapped up in a different theme. So I say, get, make sure that you can get access to all of the language, compiler, 
IDE, everything like that, make sure you've got some tutorials that you actually want to do. Um, again, I do a lot of my tutorials and my courses. I like I like to base them around games programming because I find that interesting. And I think quite a lot of people find that interesting. We can actually get things moving around on the screen, pressing buttons, having explosions, sounds and graphics and so on. And, and that gives you the motivation then to actually complete the tutorials and to learn how to program. So as I said at the very start, all programmers have their opinions on what you should start with and what you shouldn't start with. And, and although I've said that whatever you've got available to you is the best thing to do, if, if you are looking for some advice on what to choose, then, then here of course are, are my totally unbiased opinions as to which are the best ones to pick up on. Um, the very first one then is, is Python, and, and if you have been looking at all into programming, you, you will have come across Python. It, it's, it's sort of the language to do at the moment. Um, if, if you are studying computer science at school, um, especially here in the UK, then, then Python is almost certainly the language which your school is going to be teaching you. And as such, if, if that's what the position you find yourself in, it makes perfect sense to learn Python if this is going to be your hobby. And it does open up a, a big world. Um, it is a very popular language and it is very popular amongst um, the professional um, job job um, offers. So um, Python will open up a big career for you. And, and a lot of things such as um, AI and so on, a lot of that is done in Python these days. Um, so again, as I said, um, I, I have got, uh, again, um, a totally being totally unbiased here again, I do have a, a Python for beginners course. And again, that is based on programming games. And that teaches you the basic fundamentals, um, right up to object oriented programming uh, and writing a full um, arcade game based on Python with sort of graphics and sounds and, and everything that goes along with it. Um, if you are at all interested in that, then I, I will put links down in the description below, or, or if you're on my website, it'll be in the description on, on, on the text below. Uh, do, do please have a check out uh, and have a look at that. Um, other languages which I, I think are a really good bet for you, um, JavaScript is, is very much um, in, in vogue these days as well. Um, that is, a, it leads you into the whole sort of C-based um, style of languages. There's a particular style that so, so C and Java and, and JavaScript and so on, they all use pretty much the same syntax. So in other words, punctuations and so on, and the same uh, statements. So if, if you learn JavaScript, which again is, is a nice, easy one to get into, you can plug that in to your web pages and, and create some nice um, games or, or whatever. Um, based on that. And there's lots of development tools available for it as well. Uh, and JavaScript also is being used more and more throughout other areas. Um, so if you come into Node.js, um, you'll find that you can then use that on, on server and desk applications and so on. Um, and even mobile applications, um, a lot of things, co things called cross compilers allow you to code in JavaScript, and then you can simply translate it to work on Android or Apple or, or whatever. So JavaScript, again, is a good one to work with. Um, another one which probably wouldn't come up with anybody else is, is Lua. And I choose Lua as an example here, not, not because of the language itself, but really um, I've been using a lot of stuff in, in a development system called TIG80, which is a, a really good, fun way of learning to code. It's a games-based development system it has everything in one application, so you code, you create your graphics, you build your sprites, you do your animations, you create your sounds, all in this one games programming environment. And if you look on my YouTube channel, on, on my um, Take 80 courses, you'll see there that um, very quickly you can build up um, really good games actually. Um, right from learning, from the very beginning, learning to code. And it is a very fun way of doing it. Um, and, and a nice, easy lead into, which teaches you all of the these core principles I've been talking about as regards coding. Um, there are also some things then which I would say probably avoid if you are just starting out. Um, assembly language coding, it, it is a fantastic way of learning how 
computers work. Um, so assembly language programming, you really are working right down at the machine code level. So you are talking directly to your microprocessor, which is the actual brains of your computer, and you're talking in its real language. Uh, and everything you do with any of these higher level languages, such as Python and so on, all of that boils down eventually to assembly language and machine code. Um, but in, in saying that, programming in assembly language, you have to have a, a really deep knowledge of how your microprocessor works. And, uh, and if, if that's what you want to find out about, then assembly language is fantastic for showing you exactly what's going on inside a processor. But a lot of the statements which we would take for, for granted, um, sort of for loops and if statements, you, you have to build them from scratch in assembly language. So in that sense, it is, it is a harder one to get into and not one I would suggest as your very first language where once you've got the hang of these core um, principles and you understand what's going on, then assembly language is really good in teaching you how the microprocessor really works. Uh, and my final thing then, um, block-based languages such as Scratch and so on, um, I, I think they are fantastic, especially for um, younger children in that they do teach the, the core principles we've been talked about, data storage and, and iteration and so on. Um, but code is done in, in text-based editors uh, and eventually you will have to move on to that. Um, so. Uh, my advice, if 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 you are sort of in your teens or or looking to move into sort of programming as a professional career, then really get into a text-based language where you are having to code using the actual program statements and so on. Um, again, you, there is much more flexibility when you go that route. You're not just simply piecing together ready-made blocks. Um, and and that then really gives you the real flavour and will let you um, utilise all of the features of your language um, up through object oriented programming all the way through there. Um, so I say block level languages, I'm so, they are fantastic and they really do teach people how to program. And and I would say if if you have if you are very young, then you know that is a really good way to start. Um, but eventually you will want to and you will need to go across to a text-based language. Um, and, and if you are slightly older, I would strongly advise you start with text-based language just, just to get you straight into the way it's, it's, it's done for real, to be honest. So that, that's really my, my sort of two penneth, my, my thoughts on the matter of, of beginning coding. Um, again, I'm sure lots of people will have other ideas and so on, but for me, it's that core principle. It doesn't really matter at all which language you choose, as long as you can get started. Uh, and getting started, of course, is the only way which you will learn to code. Keep going, keep expanding your information, try tutorials out, make sure you get tutorials which you actually enjoy doing and that you want to do. And as I say, do have a look at mine. I, I think games programming is a great way of learning to code. And just get started, keep going, and, and have fun. It should really be fun learning to code. So hopefully we'll see some of your software appearing on the shelves not too far from now. Um, and have fun. See you soon. Don't forget to visit the course pages for this project. There you'll be able to download the code for this lesson and get lots of extra hints and tips. You'll also get access to all my other programming, electronics and gaming projects. All the links are in the description below. For more games programming, electronics projects and retro gaming, please make sure you like this video, subscribe to my YouTube channel and visit my website.